Oh, buddy, the big fish eating that Santone jig, doo da, doo da. Brother, let me tell you what a day we had. Well, welcome to McFarland's Corner. I'm Michael McFarland, giving you the May 16th Daily Rundown. Folks, today I had two trips. I had a full day followed up by an evening twilight. So in essence, that's a full day, an eight-hour session, two four-hour sessions anyways, and then another four-hour session. I got some leery, tired eyes, but I got some cool stuff to talk about. So we start off the morning like we have been, looking for the shad spawn, the blue herons. It's still going on, and we're still catching fish. Uh, this morning we went about it kind of the same as always. Started with the top water. Didn't have any top water blow-ups, but I do want to talk about the top water that I choose to throw. This is the Yellow Magic. Okay, threadfin shad color. Sparkles on the bottom. I love that, that bottom sparkle instead of just a solid color. Uh, there's smaller shad in some of these cases, so that sparkle really helps too. Um, but Yellow Magic Popper, that's the top water of choice. If you throw a Rico, that would do it too. There's a big difference. A big, big difference from a Rico or a Yellow Magic and a little Rebel Popper or just a cheap aftermarket popper. I promise you, it makes all the difference in the world. Second bait that we've been throwing. Did have a few fish on it this morning, is the underspin. It's just a flashy swimmer. It's called a little flashy swimmer. And you can put yourself Kitek baits on there. You can put the, the Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper. Uh, this here is a Smash Tech, a little three inch Smash Shad Junior. So that's the Smash Junior, uh, chartreuse the tail. But that little underspin right there will get it done in the Shad Spawn. And actually, if you'll stick with that or go to a five inch and a little larger and just fish it all day, even deeper, you'll catch some bigger fish. The Carolina rig, man. What can I say? Shad spot going on, top water, no bites, underspin, a few bites. Once again, the Carolina rig coming through in flying colors. And I credit it all to the Impact Shad. All right. By the way, I owe you all an apology. I owe Mark Pack and Impact Lures an apology. They don't make a three and a half. All right, I've been telling everybody it's a three and a half and a seven inch. It's a five inch and a seven inch. So we've been using this five inch in Green Pumpkin Magic and Green Pumpkin Magic Red. Now I know there's a shad spawn going on. Why would not be using shad colors? Well, for whatever reason, a little dirtier water, they're able to see this a little better. I do chartreuse the tail, and maybe it's just a chartreuse. They eat that better. So I have put on the disco green and the disco violet, but I'm going to tell you what, right there, that green pumpkin magic, chartreuse tail, getting it done. All right? All those fish were pretty much unders, maybe a couple small slots. So about 8 o'clock, about 8 o'clock when, when that bite went away, the shad spawn was done, it was time to go throw the football jig. So we rolled to one of my deep shell beds, pulled up. Now I got a single guy this morning, so I was gonna fish with him for a little bit. Within about 15 minutes, I hit the first deep shell bed, about 22 feet. I hit a little shallower shell bed, about 20, 18 feet. And then I hit a shell bed, the third shell bed, that was about 16 feet. Boom, I connect with a six pounder. I get my client up front, I put my rods away. I'm no longer going fish, we on them. Boy, what a heartbreak. I feel for you, buddy. I know you're probably going to watch this, and uh, it's the rundown, so i got to talk about it. But when I was a young kid, I played soccer, and my soccer coach used to always say, McFarlane, don't be a bin, brother. Do you know what a bin, brother, is? No. I would have been, could have been, should have been. So this morning, my client didn't do anything wrong. He had some things to learn. It's irrelevant. But man, in 15 minutes, he loses three giant fish, one of them just shy of the net. His heart's broken. These are all six, seven pound class fish. Now I wanna teach you something. The first fish got almost to the net, which was about 30 yards from the shell bed. The next two were lost at the surface above the shell bed. When you lose a fish, when fish are schooling, and you lose a fish near or still in that school, it comes unbuttoned, if it goes back into the school, it usually messes up the bite. And so those fish quit biting. That's pretty much what happens. Those two, the second and third fish that he lost, went back down into the school. They're stressed out, 
so they stopped the bite. Um, that bite was going to be a romp and terror bite for the next 30 minutes, at least. Those fish were feeding. So it turned into a grind. We went to lunch. We went back out in the afternoon, did some graph work, found another really good spot holding fish. My client gets the bite, sets the hook. This is a big one. This is, this is a nine pounder for sure. We saw it twice. Got close to the boat about 10 feet. He's doing everything right. I'm thinking this is it. This is this. He's going to do it this time. One last little head shake and off she went. He did nothing wrong. Just that one, the fish won. So on that full day trip, if we'd have boated all those fish, we'd have been in the 32 to 35 pound range. All right. What a morning. What an awesome client. I really enjoyed you today. Thank you for being with me, John. Got a half day with you tomorrow, but we're going to try and make revenge. All right. So now I let John go home. I pick up my afternoon. It's a father and son. 73 year old father. It's his birthday. Son tells me the opposite of what I usually hear. The father usually says he wants the son to catch the fish. Well, this is a middle-aged man, the son, and uh, he said the opposite. He said, you know, we need to know some things for the Legends event, so we don't want to wear anything out, but I do want my father to catch one. I like my father to catch some fish. It's his birthday. So I showed him some things on the unders. We run to the big fish spot. We pull up. I make the first cast so I can kind of demonstrate this a little bit on how I wanted to work the jig through the shell bed. I done my demonstration. I hand the rod off to the son who hands the rod off to his dad who is already into a big end. <laughs> first cast. Here we go. We're fighting this fish, fighting this fish, and we lose it. Oh, I just want to start to cry. But man, it's a tough day. The fish is winning today. Dad throws back out, hooks another one, loses it. Man. This, this, we're starting to feel this. <laughs> starting to feel this a little bit. But they eat in that Santone jig, aren't they? So finally, Dad, third fish, puts it in the boat. It's about a five and a half pounder. It's a good fish. Mind you, this is all happening in less than 15 minutes. All right. So we take pictures. We do a few things with Dad. It ain't two more minutes. Sun's into it. We got an eight and a half pounder, eight pounds, 10 ounce bass in the boat, in the net. They both look at me and said, hey, can we leave? We want to save this for the legends. Folks, I tell you what, I promised you they were going to eat Samtone jig. I know fish. I understand how they move in and I understand how they move out. They are now moving out. Okay, we have lake stabilization. Great, finally, spring warm trend, full moon. The fish are mostly done spawning. There are still fish that are going to spawn. Every year in a Skeeter event, somebody catches fish that are still holding eggs. Big fish. So it's not done. But the majority of them fish are now pulling out. The shad spawn is finishing. As those shad get too hot in that water and they're done spawning, they roll out. This pulls it all out offshore. There's nothing better than that Santone jig. There are some guys that are slow rolling. The underspin, the big underspin, five-inch baits. And catching them on the same, right off the bottom on the underspin. That's a great bait. But what an afternoon. I mean, I don't know anywhere in the world other than here. A few lakes, occasionally this will happen to you. But I don't know a lake in the world that this is something that happens on a daily basis. For the next four to six weeks, this is what you're going to see most of the guides maybe even almost all the guides out there producing, the ones at least that know the offshore bite, it's incredible. So this is the Goat Lake. It's the greatest lake of all times. Lake Fork, all right? 35 pounds twice. If they'd have all been on board the boat, if we'd have stayed instead of leaving the guys in the afternoon, if we'd have stayed, man, I don't know how many more we would have caught because they were chewing, all right? That all happened in 15 minutes, man. Guys, I really appreciate Everybody that's watching, I appreciate all the support. I'm extremely tired right now. In fact, my whole garage is blurred, but I promise you I'm going to give it everything I got to give you this daily rundown and commit to it. I'm doing just that. The Santone jig, we're going to show it to you one more time. I know you've seen it. I don't mean to be redundant. You're going to see a lot of this the next four weeks. And it's going to convert into the Santone half ounce stand-up shaky hit with big worms. Okay, but there she is. PB&J right now with a green pumpkin trailer seems to be the best for me. I can tell you that J.C. Craw is, is probably the number one color to throw. When they quit eating the peanut butter, I'll go to the J.C. Craw 
and I'll even throw a little bit of the Pake's Perch, which is a brim color. Uh, pretty soon those offshore will love them brim. The brim will finish spawning and move out too a little bit and they'll really start eating the brim. Um, but listen, man, what a day, what a, what a, what a blessing that the Lord showed up and, and gave the birthday man the big fish and, and uh, just, just uh, a day on the Goat Lake, a day living the dream. Here I am 14 hours uh, and, and still excited, as tired as I am. It's, what a pleasure. What a true pleasure to be able to do what I do and share everything I'm learning with all of you. So, folks, that's the daily rundown. I expect uh, tomorrow will be a little bit different. The Legend event is going to have 700 boats, I'm guessing. A lot of boats are going to change the bite. Potentially Saturday rain. So, the next couple of days, we'll see where it goes. I am booked. Um, it might be even hard to get on a spot. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, that concludes the day. And... The Daily Rundown. I'm Michael McFarland, wishing you all great fishing.